Uh, we are honored to be joined here uh, by uh, His Excellency Ahmed Al Sayed. He is the chairman of the Qatar Free Zones Authority and a minister of state here in Qatar. And also uh, Farouk Goler, the CEO of EBSASH, the Aegean Free Zone Development and Operating Company. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Farouk, I want to start, start with you since you're coming to us all the way from Turkey. Um, tell me more about the two top goals of the Aegean Free Zone Authority. What, what are the things that you want to accomplish in a macro sense? When we look at Turkey, uh, you know, Turkey uh, started uh, uh, to uh, develop the free zone in 1980s. As you know, globalization started and Turkey uh, affected very much uh, by the globalization in early uh, 80s. And I might say that one of the, the most important decisions given by the Turkish uh, uh, authorities is to establish the free zone to attract the foreign direct investment to Turkey. So the first two uh, free zones in Turkey established late 1980s. Uh, the aim was to uh, generate uh, uh, current account deficit, uh, help to uh, current account deficit in 1980s and create job and be part of the globalization uh, contributing to uh, the trade. Now we have 18 yeah, I... free zones in Turkey, and I think uh, we reach uh, this target. One of the targets was to have foreign, inv foreign investment in free zones. Now we have 1,900 companies in free zones, in 18 free zones, and 500 of them is foreign direct investors. So even though Excellency, the I want to ask, I want to, I want to compare a little bit. So, sorry, Farouk. I want to compare a little bit the purpose of the Qatar Free Zone Authority because it's a little bit different. It's not as much about uh, jobs for locals necessarily. Yes. You know, let me just elaborate here. As you know, Qatar, it's a small economy compared to uh, Turkey, small population. But, you know, the government, you know, decided to create, you know, or to attract FDI. And the free zone was, you know, one of the latest initiatives to actually to attract and to do a business development, you know, mainly to attract FDI and also to enable a partnership, you know, between foreign investor and local investors. So it's an economic development platform, you know, being established to attract international and to mix it with local. And when we said international, we means, you know, really a different, you know, uh, you know, investment from the West, from the, uh, the East. And, you know, we are trying to create an ecosystem that we reconnect the world in our zone. That's so mainly we are trying to achieve an economic diversification by attracting FDI and also encourage private sector to partner with them. Now, this is a, a diversification is an issue for Gulf countries generally right. who are dependent on uh, hydrocarbons. How is it going, do you think? What's your assessment of where we are in that process? You know, in Qatar, I think we are doing, you know, uh, very well. Uh, you know, there is good activities. As you know, Qatar went through a different development phase. You know, so, you know, I will not talk about the other, but I will talk about our country. Actually, you know, uh, since um, before the 20 or 1995, most of the, our focus was on the oil. After 96, which is the first shipment of gas, you know, and the government revenue being enhanced by the gas revenue, the country or the government, you know, start to diversify our platform and create a main institution here in Qatar. You know, so before 2000, for example, Qatar Airways and then Qatar uh, Foundations and others. In the 2000 era, at the beginning, <clears throat> at the first you know, uh, five years, the Supreme Council for Investment, Economic Affairs and Investment has been created. Other main institutions mm -hmm. to attract the IQFC, Qatar Science and Technology Park, Qatar Investment Authority, you know, for investment. And then we came with the national, you know, vision 
and the free zone life. So 2021, you're uh, along the process, but not necessarily there yet, exactly. We are and progressing in a steady base and very well things, and we have achieved a lot so far. Rook, I want to talk to you about uh, how you measure things like employment in particular. Um, uh, is that the num Are you measuring the number of people employed by the, the free zone as a, as, a, as a sense of your achievement and your progress? Or, or what do you look at essentially in terms of indicators? Actually, uh, the aim, the target changed uh, uh, through the years in Turkey. Nowadays, the most important thing for the free zones are to create a high added value products, high technology uh, uh, products. Uh, it's, it is actually changed. The, the concentration has changed to improve the technology uh, of, the, of the companies in free zones. For, and, and also still we are uh, behind the export. Uh, for instance, the latest uh, uh, change in uh, free zone regulations in Turkey uh, is to establish specialized free zones. Now we are having a specialized free zones for certain uh, technologies or for, for certain products. For instance, the last year we have a new uh, 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 specialized free zone uh, only holding companies uh, in IT sector and software producers. So we are now in Turkey is changing from uh, mainly job creation to high technology creation. A actually, uh, so you're looking uh, at the quality, you're looking at the quality of businesses as well as uh, as well as the the num number of value for for direct investment. Yeah, because um, if you look you, at the 1980s, yeah, 1980s, the, the conditions in Turkey were very much different than today's uh, uh, you know uh, requirements, today's need. Today we are looking more on high technology investors and IT investors, basically in our free zones. I want to talk about today specifically because COVID-19 has encouraged uh, some degree of diversification or sorry, fragmentation across the world uh, economically, countries wanting to bring their industries, their top industries home. Her Excellency, what have you been hearing about from companies that want to, that would consider doing business in a free zone? Yeah. How has that conversation changed in the last 18 months? Okay. So the good news here, we started late, you know, here, you know, which is, to be frank with you, you can put it as a positive because we establish it and we are focusing on tomorrow world. So, you know, of course, the technology was one of the, our main themes. So we have started before COVID focusing on disruptive technology, focusing on bringing the big data to enable the business environment to prepare companies for tomorrow. So, you know, COVID really impacted the world, but we continue our smooth operation during this, you know, period. Thanks to technology and thanks to our strategic partner, we have Microsoft, we have Google, and, you know, we have the big data. So all of our focus, to be frank with you, for the first phase investors like Talis, like Google, like Microsoft, like also the logistic companies, you know, was using technology and prepare themselves for tomorrow, which is to be frank with you, helped us to deal, to dealt with a COVID situation in a very well uh, way. You know, Farouk, I, I understand that your uh, free zone does a little bit more manufacturing. How has COVID uh, changed the situation for you? You know, uh, uh, all over the world, the companies are affected from the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we have been affected just about two months of the first uh, a, a year of COVID pandemic, which means uh, 2020, February, 2020, April and May. Uh, because the, com the companies here are really the part of the global trade. And we are, we are a supplier of the global market. 
That's why uh, the companies here started to recover the production very early uh, 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 June 2020, and they are gro they are growing their business even much uh, ahead of uh, 2019, which is before uh, COVID. This shows again that the, the companies uh, uh, producing uh, uh, technological products, they are always uh, uh, ready to uh, uh, start, uh, even if it is affected by uh, the crisis like COVID. And now we, we finished in 2020, very close uh, uh, business volume of 2019. 2019 was very that's good great. year that's, all over the world. That's impressive. Even this year, that's, that's we, impressive. we are much better. Yeah, thank you. Even this year, we are much better than 2019. I want to ask about another topical piece uh, in the news, a bit of headline here. There's talk from the G7 about a global corporate minimum tax. Now, do you guys uh, worry about the potential pressure uh, from some of the world's most wealthiest nations um, to up taxes? That's a key bit uh, of important uh, advantage that free zones can offer. So uh, that's a very good question. We are working and uh, studying what's happening <clears throat> so far. I think the understanding now they are talking about the G7 economies and there is, will be expansion you know, of talk you know, to come to the um, uh, World Trade Organization and others. But to be frank with you, you know, it all depends on how it will be implemented. So the mechanism is not clear yet. You know, uh, International companies or global companies anyway have, will have a different operating location and the platform serving, serving different jurisdictions. So in our uh, uh, location here in the GCC, for example, or in the region, you get my point, it's not clear yet how this will be implemented and how this will impact the global companies. So let's wait and see. We are working, to be frank with you, and we are interested to learn more. We are seeking clarification, and uh, we will work with our companies to really, you know, enhance their business environment. But the tax is not everything. So to be frank with you, why companies come here and there to establish, they are looking for advanced regulatory regime, which we are offering. They are looking for connectivity, you know, and logistic offering. So the tax is one component. Yes, it's important, but not everything. So when companies decide to expand their operation, you know, they are really considering multiple things, including the workforce and other, you know, incentive or, uh, you know, elements before they open an international operation. So uncertainty, but not uh, deep cynicism, let's say. Farouk, do you, think, do you think of things the same way? And we, we're running out of time, so just quickly here. I, I, agree, I agree with the uh, minister. When we ask the investors here coming to Free Zone, the tax advantage is the number five in their decision making. There are other reasons, as minister indicated, to choose the free zones, not only the tax issue. The most important thing here in the world is the inflation, I believe. Farouk Goler, uh, uh, Excellency uh, Minister Ahmed Al Sayed, thank you so much for joining us today. A very interesting discussion about free zones uh, in the global world post pandemic. Thanks, guys. Pleasure, Simon. Thank you very much for hosting us and wish you all the best in Qatar Economic Forum. Thank you.